Hi, Patrick. We are so excited to have you on our show today to share. Thanks all so your... much. I'm excited to come along. Yes. Um, to share all of your immense knowledge around all things laundry and learning to love laundry and cleaning and infusing more joy into your home. And I have to just say, I was introduced to you for the first time through a local women's club in this, this past fall. And you honestly changed my relationship with laundry. And I knew immediately we had to have you on our show. And I took all these copious notes and I like the dork I am. I created this Google doc and I laminated it and put it in my laundry room with your book and all the products that I bought. And my kids are even so much happier because laundry has really been something that stressed me out for the last several years to the point that I had my, all three of my kids doing their own laundry. And I think my youngest was maybe eight when he started doing his own laundry. And mm -hmm. they're just really happy because their clothes, their athletic clothes no longer stink. Thanks to you. Right. So it's been, <laughs> it's been life-changing and we're re really honored to have you on our show today. You can talk about both of your books, the laundry book, but then also your latest book, um, House Love, which really supports and encourages people to create a home that brings them joy. So with that, let's dive in to this conversation today. But actually, all right. yeah, before we talk all things laundry and cleaning, we would love to know what is your one non-negotiable to start every day? Oh, gosh, my one non-negotiable to start every day. I kind of am one of those people who just sort of wakes up and, and just wings it. Um, I don't know if, if um, <clears throat> there's that one non-negotiable every morning. I guess um, it's funny. I have to, I will say, I have to start every morning with some sort of drink. Like mm -hmm. it's literally the first thing I do. I need something cold right when I get out of bed. And then after that, you know, I'm just going to wing it. Mm. You're just in the flow, which is great. Yeah, I don't. And I, I kind of don't live with non-negotiables. If you really want, you know, I mean, I guess my only, non, I kind of only have two non-negotiables in life, you know, which is no dryer sheets, no fabric softener. But beyond that, <laughs> I don't have any other, do you know what I mean? I just, That's amazing. I, I don't live in absolutes, I guess. That's okay. actually quite profound and beautiful. Yeah. Um, well, that is quite the segue into we would love to hear your story in a nutshell on how you became known as the laundry evangelist. And then you ultimately, you know, wrote these two books, Laundry Love and House Love. And we'd love to hear about it. Well, um, my laundry story, I'll make it really brief because it's long. But um, one of my earliest memories is handing my granny clothespins to put clothes on the clothesline. And I know that I was about two and a half. And the reason I know that is my birthday is in November. And when I turned three, Santa brought me a toy washing machine. So my love of laundry goes all the way back um, to, you know, a toy washing machine from the Sears catalog in the 70s. <laughs> and um, I just associated having my laundry done as being taken care of. You know, like that someone was taking care of me. And so with that, I have this, like, this idea that you do laundry for people that you love. And that just, you know, and then I always loved clothes. And my mom and my granny always took great care of my clothes when I was a kid. And then I took care of my clothes when I was older. And I've just always associated cared for laundry as being cared for. And so I guess that just kind of became a thing throughout my life. And then, you know, I was lucky enough to work in some really wonderful stores and with, around the most beautiful clothes in the world. And, um, you know, and I wanted to take care of them. And so then when I opened a store, I wanted people to take care of their clothes. And so I started teaching laundry camp and laundry camp led to, you know, Karen and I writing the book and then my TV show and, than me talking to everybody and now me talking to you. What is Laundry Camp? Laundry Camp is a basically it's a two hour class where I teach you to wash everything you own. You know, I don't think anything needs to go to the dry cleaner. Like I haven't said anything to the dry cleaner in years. And, you know, including my tuxedo, my cashmere overcoat, my cashmere sweaters, nothing goes to the dry cleaner. And it's just, a, I teach everybody sort of a better, greener way to do all of their laundry. 
And I hope that when they're done, they kind of fall in love with the process. I love that. I, I stopped sending my clothes to the dry cleaner maybe like, I don't know, a few years ago when I learned about all the chemicals and the dry cleaning. Um, but every so often I'll get like a piece of, you know, I'll have like a fancy dress or something that's like, I, I don't know how to wash it. And then I'm like, I just suck it up and send it to the dry cleaner. So I'm hoping we talk about that at some point today. Well, of course we can talk <laughs> about that at some point, any point, because, you know, the thing is like the Victorians used to change their clothes like more times than a five-year-old. Like yeah. they would change their clothes all day, right? And they didn't have dry cleaners. You know, they had somebody who washed everything. So all those silks and all those, you know, precious fibers that were not as durable as fibers now because we didn't have the technology, you know, all those things were washed and ironed by hand and they were all meticulous. I mean, we talk about like Marie Antoinette, you know, with her like sort of lavishness. Well, all those clothes were washed by hand and, you know, there was no dry cleaner. Marie Antoinette didn't have one, Good you know, point. and... And yeah. so many, I mean, and we see so many garments that are in museums. So we know it worked because those garments survived. You Very know? good point. Mm -hmm. I actually so, hadn't thought about that. You know, there's no need for the dry cleaner. You know, so, and just you know, going, yeah, going back to something that you said earlier about how your love of laundry came about and just someone was taking care of you and that, you know, you you do laundry for people you love. And mm -hmm. now one, I'm feeling bad that I'm not doing my kids laundry. What does that say about me? But it just the point, I guess the point being is that you're doing it out of a place of love and goodness and showing your service. And it's an act of love for you, right. which is a great way to reframe laundry and also cleaning, which is something that a lot of people dislike, you know, not everyone enjoys it. And we're hoping to infuse more tips, strategies, and calm and joy into people's lives through this conversation. Um, yeah, you know, people. yeah. And the other way to think about reframing it. Okay. So my dad's a builder and he built my childhood home, you know, when I was very young, before my brother was born. And it had, you know, very large double ovens that my mother has said were spectacular. I, you know, anyway, but double ovens. And at that time, if you watched TV shows, no matter sitcoms or, you know, whatever, you would always see people, and it was usually women because it was sort of the times, you know, and they would always be like, oh, I've got to make dinner for the kids. And like, oh, I have to fix dinner. Like it was this, you know, horrible thing, like that they were in like Les Miserables or something. <laughs> and, you know, now... There are stores devoted to cooking. Cookbooks are the number one selling book category. There are TV networks devoted to cooking. There are magazines devoted to cooking. There are podcasts devoted to cooking. There are YouTube channels devoted to cooking. Here's a fun fact. In 1975, my mother put the chicken in the oven the exact same way that Ina Garten puts the chicken in the oven. The only thing that changed is Ina decided it was a hobby. That's mm. it. That's the only thing that happened. Mm. It's the same kind of chicken. It's the roughly the same kind of roasting pan, although, you know, Ina's isn't harvest gold. But otherwise, it's the exact same thing. And quite frankly, it's nearly the same method. Like my mother's chicken and Ina's chicken are almost the same. The only thing that changed is we decided that it was fun, you know, mm. So, you know, Martha Stewart decided homemaking was an art, not a chore. And that's it. That's the change. The change wasn't the devices. The change wasn't, you know, the times. The change wasn't anything. It was just a mental shift. And so when you make that mental shift and decide that doing your laundry isn't some chore, but it's an opportunity, hmm. That's it. That's all it is. I mean, it's not really harder than that. The hard part is telling yourself that laundry can be an opportunity, but it's really sort of funny, you know, thinking about like the world, you know, and not to get political or whatever. But right now, 
or just any time, really, you need an escape. Like everybody needs an escape. You know, there's she sheds and man caves and all those things. And there are escapes, but the laundry room can be an escape or putting in your earbuds and vacuuming can also be an escape. You just have to decide, here's where I get little moments of joy, you know, and that's it. It's, I mean, it's, it's all mental. Yeah, no, that so makes true. so much sense. And just going back to laundry camp and thinking about laundry, I, I really want to know like where, what is the most helpful thing that you make help people make a change when it comes to laundry or like, what are the biggest issues that people have in general? The biggest issues are people use too much detergent. You know, people mm -hmm. use too much detergent. You know, you only need two tablespoons. If you're going to use commercial detergent, you only need two tablespoons. If you're going to use soap flakes, you only need one tablespoon. And that's for a full load. So when the load starts getting smaller, you need to cut it back even further. The biggest change is going to the express cycle. You do not need some two-hour cycle to do your laundry. 30 minutes in warm water is long enough. So if you do that, then you can move through. I mean, I'm thinking of like, you know, when you say, well, I have three kids, you probably have five or six loads of laundry. If you can make them all a half an hour each, that's only three hours. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, you load and unload in three and a half hours, all the laundry can be done for the week. So it's not these two hour cycles that, you know, beat the devil out of your clothes. It's quick cycle, less detergent. I mean, those two things will change your whole trajectory with laundry. I will attest to that. I mean, even my youngest is like, wow, this is so much better. I can get through all my laundry. You know, he can even put a load in before he goes to school in the morning if he wants. So that is a game changer. And I know I personally thought everything had to be done in cold water because I didn't want to shrink it. Right. And you enlightened me on that with the warm water cycle. Especially yeah. when you live somewhere cold, I know you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, I mean, it's, I think it's seven degrees right now. So, you know, our cold water is pretty cold. So you go to warm, your clothes come clean, you don't need this big cycle. And I think that's kind of liberating, you know, to just be able to move through the laundry, you know, relatively quickly. Like you can have all your laundry done in the time that it takes to get to New York. You know, it's just... <laughs> Not that big of a thing. Well, Marnie, next year when our kids from home from camp, think about how much faster this process will be. Well, and I'm wondering lights and darks. What are your thoughts on that? Like half the time I get lazy and I just throw it all in together. Oh my God, no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> I had a feeling oh, you were going to say face. that. <laughs> you got to sort your clothes. It's really hard on them if you don't. Can you tell me why? Like, what? It's actually the weight of the dye, believe it or not. It's just, it's too aggressive. You know, the thing is, um, like, you don't scrub the soles of your feet after camping the same way you wash your face. You know, it's just your clothes, you need to sort your clothes because the the weights of the fabrics really do make a difference in how long your clothes care how long your clothes last and there's a sustainability piece to that which i care very much about but there's just also you look pretty meticulously dressed i doubt that you will wear something if it doesn't look good so if you don't take care of it you're not really taking care of you I mean, really doing your laundry is kind of the same as going to the hairdresser or kind of the same as getting a facial. It's taking care of your appearance. That's such an excellent point. I hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah, me too. Um, but like you could do lights and darks, right? It doesn't have to be whites. Or would you only do whites like socks? and? Um, I do whites white together. But the thing is, we have so many whites. Like you're, we're both wearing white shirts. And, you know, we have white sheets and white towels and white socks and white kitchen towels and white tablecloths. You know, it's not that hard to do a white load of laundry when you start walking around the house. Okay, um, well, that's an interesting point, because I would never have done towels with, like, T-shirts and socks. 
I do kind of towel separately and then clothing separately. And I probably wouldn't yeah, do you like don't the have to. Cloth. You can mix them together. It's fine. Okay. Um, they will become sterile. I mean, they will become sterile in a half an hour. So you don't have to, you know, break them up that much. I mean, if you wanted to, you could do your towels in your wedding dress. <laughs> you know. What about linen bags? Like I use linen bags for so many different things. Oh, I love them. Okay. Love them. I mean, that's the perfect way to wash your cashmere sweaters. You know, I have a friend who he has two just for socks and he puts all of his socks as he takes them off. He just puts them in a bag. And then when he throws them in the wash, he zips it shut and throws them in the wash. And then that becomes his clean socks. And the empty bag becomes the dirty socks. And so that way his socks are always sorted. Hmm. That's actually a really losing good tip. to the sock monster. <laughs> yeah. And we have one of those in our house, the sock monster. Yeah. You know. Um, okay. So we started talking earlier in the conversation that you mentioned dry cleaning. Um, yeah. any tips, like I know for myself, I, w I don't go to dry cleaning a ton, but like my duvet cover and this like coverlet that I have on the bed, I would always dry clean a couple of times a year. And I started washing it and I was like, wow, not only is this better for me, obviously, because of the chemicals like Marnie mentioned, but I'm saving a lot of money by not bringing these heavy, big pieces to the dry cleaners. So right. any other, like you mentioned the cashmere sweaters, like, and putting them into the bags, any other tips around pieces that like Marnie's dress that she mentioned that you may not think, oh, that could be hand washed or put in the washing machine. Well and like labels that say, you know, hand dry wash clean only. only. Yeah, or dry clean only. Just like oh, ignore those or what do we do? I have the best tip ever for those. Okay. Like when the tag says dry clean only or hand wash cold or hand wash cold dry flat or you know whatever, the first half of the tip is all that means is handle with care. Mm. So it means that you need to pay a little more attention to what you're doing. So when the cashmere sweater says dry clean only, that means you're going to put it in a laundry bag, you know, to wash it. Or yeah. when it says hand wash cold, that means you need to look at it and go, okay, why does this really need to do that? But then once you've figured out how to wash it, then just cut the tag out. Then it doesn't say that. <laughs> you know, so once you've figured out how to wash it, just cut the tag out. I mean, you've got this, you know, don't let your clothes be your boss. <laughs> I love that. Don't let your clothes be your boss. Yeah. Um, so for the things that say dry clean only, um, would you recommend cold water versus the warm? I only use warm. Oh, <clears throat> I even only use warm the, water all even the time. Even for uh -huh. the special items. Yes. Okay. Because you're going through the express cycle. And the thing that you'll realize is when you're using the express cycle, your clothes are only in warm water for about eight minutes. So they're not really in warm water long enough to do any damage. They're just in warm water long enough to clean them. Okay. I mean, that's kind of like a shower, you know. Are Absolutely. you drying your clothes or are you laying everything out? I I throw anything knit across a drying rack and mm -hmm. anything woven, I hang on a hanger and let it dry. I don't put them in the dryer. So the no, only thing nothing I put in the dryer, the dryer. Is sheets, towels, undies, socks. Okay. Which can be a little challenging with a lot of laundry. Yeah, except when you use less detergent, it dries so quickly when you hang it up. Mm. You know, like when I hang my shirts up, I mean, I like, I can give you a great example. This morning, right before I left the house, I started a load of laundry right when I got up. I got up, I went and got some iced tea, I threw a load of laundry in, and then I started getting ready. And then, you know, when I was done right before I dressed, because my laundry room was also my bathroom, um, I pulled everything out and hung it up, you know, hung up the shirts and threw the, um, there was one sweater in there. I threw it across the drying rack. It's probably already dry, you know, I mean, in an hour, it's probably dry. Okay, it doesn't take that long. Yeah, that's good to know. I have a question about um, like dress shirts, like the one that you're wearing now. Yeah. So that's one area that we... My, we still use the dry cleaner for. Obviously, it doesn't need to be dry cleaned, but it's the laundry service. Right. If I wash my husband's shirts and hang them up, will I need to iron them? Because I have PTSD. My mother made me iron my father's shirts growing up. Oh, my God. Yeah. And his, it's like a chore, you know. 
like I'm in yeah. the dishwasher and I, and, and handkerchiefs. Yeah. And I just have PTSD from that. So I don't want to be doing that. So I can tell you two parts to that. Okay. You might. You will. But there's a way around it. <laughs> okay. There are so many 100% cotton, no iron dress shirts available. And the no iron technology is so good that if you buy, like, I, this is just one brand. There's a million of them. This just happens to be one. Like Brooks Brothers. Mm -hmm. Brooks Brothers, no iron shirts. If you take them out of the washer, throw them in the, for the dryer for five minutes and hang them up, they will look like they just came back from the laundry. Hmm. So depending on what shirts he has now, the answer is maybe, you know, but as he starts to replace them, if you all, and the thing is no iron, it used to be like, I mean, I remember when no iron shirts meant they were 60 cotton, 40 polyester. And, you know, I wouldn't wear that, but there are, you can now get no iron. That's a hundred percent cotton. They're nice shirts. You know, he's not relegated to white or blue. I mean, he can have any pattern, any color. I mean, at, lots of brands only do no iron now. Mm. And, you know, they really do look good. So, you know, if I love to iron, so it's not really a chore to me. I mean, yeah. I iron my no iron shirts. But <laughs> um, actually, it's funny. The shirt that's in my headshot is a, it's a Brooks Brothers no iron shirt. And I actually didn't iron it because I needed it for the headshot. And I literally got up that morning and I was running late. You know how that goes. And I threw it in the dryer because it I had washed it to wear. I threw it in the dryer, pulled it out, put it on a hanger and brought it in and put it on and wore it. Yeah. And it, it looks ironed. Well, and one thing that I do, and I don't know if this is good or bad, but if I'm I'm washing something that typically needs ironing is I will like smooth it out with my hands. Like I'll try and when it's wet, smooth all the wrinkles out and then hang it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. I mean, it's, it's, the key is just knocking the wrinkles out. I mean, I do that to sweaters mm -hmm. because I don't even want to throw them in the dryer for five minutes, you know, right. but yeah. like my, my dress shirts, I will, if I don't want to iron them, I throw them in the dryer for five minutes and then hang them up and the dryer that five minutes of tumbling kind of knocks the wrinkles out of them. Well, I'm going to try it. I'll let you know what happens. And honestly, All right, keep me posted. since COVID, he doesn't wear as many dress shirts anyway. So it shouldn't yeah. be that big of a deal. And if on Zoom, who cares if they're wrinkled? <laughs> well, I mean, no you know, if it's on go. Zoom, you only have to yeah. iron this. Exactly. exactly. Right. <laughs> so you, you, you mentioned this earlier in the conversation, Patrick, but we know you're into sustainability and using all natural and environmentally friendly products which a lot of what you carry in your store. So can you talk about this? I mean, a lot of people, and we've we've had this topic discussed on this podcast before with cleaning products a couple of times now, but a lot of people still don't realize and they're using, not to name names, but Tide and Shout and all the, you know, whether it's laundry detergent or- Dryer sheets. Dryer oh. sheets, which are which is a no-no for you. Yes, can you I talk mean, about- It's my non-negotiable. It's a non-negotiable yeah. why and what you can use in replace of and- you know, your products, your brands, and how simple and clean they are and cost effective, I have to say. And maybe Thanks. some of your favorites. Well, I mean, I prefer laundry soap to laundry detergent right off the bat because soap is cleaner. You know, yeah. I have soap made for my store. I'll just start there. The soap I have made for my store, the ingredients are sunflower oil and coconut oil. And that's it. Um, so there's nothing else in it. We don't use any fillers. Um, I wanted the best laundry soap in the world. When I talked to the woman who makes it for me, I wanted the best laundry soap in the world. That was the only thing I cared about. I was like, I want it to be the very best and the very cleanest. And it is. And, you know, so I always am going to prefer laundry soap to laundry detergent, which laundry soap is something you can now start to be. I'm starting to see it show up in the grocery store. So it's not as impossible to find as it once was. Um, you know, and then even if you use laundry detergent, there are still better options. I mean, it's kind of like when we look at food, you know, when I go buy, I don't know, spaghetti sauce, you know, if I buy spaghetti sauce in the store and I flip the jar over, I look at the ingredients 
And when the ingredients start to get to where I can't pronounce them, then I usually go to a different brand. Well, that's how you should look at your cleaning products. Because the thing is, I mean, your laundry detergent, we know that our skin is our largest organ, right? Um, we know that because we, you know, have more skin than we do anything else. But we also know that our skin absorbs everything. And there's a few ways to know that. Number one, people who try to stop smoking use the patch. You know, I had this really minor procedure a few years ago, and they used a numbing patch before they inserted this little needle, right? So um, our skin absorbed that. Like, like, that's how it worked. Like, we put it on, and then it went in, and, you know, now people are starting to use patches for other things. I mean, CBD patches are huge. And anything we put on us... Anything we put on our skin, it gets absorbed. Well, our skin isn't like selective. It isn't like, oh, this is good. I should absorb it. And oh, this is bad. I shouldn't. <laughs> it just absorbs. Right. So when we're when we put all these chemicals on our clothes, that's just sinking into our skin too. You know, we're absorbing those chemicals. So if you wouldn't eat it, you shouldn't put it on your clothes because either way it's going into your body. So interesting. I mean, we've so, talked about this so many times and no one's ever articulated it like that before. Well, especially in reference to like laundry soap or detergent. But when you're saying soap, are you saying like, can you, like detergent, you know, there's liquid detergent, there's powdery detergent. When you It'll say soap- It'll be labeled soap. soap. It's actually the way that it's manufactured. The difference is the manufacturing process. Okay. Soap has a chemical reaction that recurs to create soap. Detergent is ingredients mixed together. And I won't tell you that there aren't safe detergents. Okay. I just prefer soap. I prefer the way that it cleans. But when you're going to the store, you can look for laundry soap or you can look for laundry detergent. But even if you're going to go to, you know, the big box and you're going to buy the big brands, you can look at the ingredients, you know, and you can look for things that say plant-based. You can look for things that say non-toxic. You know, you can start looking um, for things that don't have phthalates. Yeah. You know, there's things that you can look for um, to determine better. I mean, just like you would if you were buying ice cream. Yeah. Such you a know, great it's analogy. The, it's the same process. So you just look for cleaner cleaning products. And, and you don't want fragrance either, right? Like fragrance is never um, a good I thing. I tend to avoid fragrance because yeah. so often they're chemically. I mean, there are yeah. brands that use essential oils if you're obsessed with fragrance. But my other take on that is I typically live relatively fragrance free. However, I buy the love of my life fragrance for every occasion. <laughs> and... Like it, it, it was just his birthday and I bought him, you know, a bottle of Tom Ford. And the thing is, if I'm going to spend 200 plus dollars on a bottle of fragrance, that's what he should smell like. Not some petrochemical that's some artificial fragrance that's supposed to smell like river rain. Right. You know, <laughs> why do you spend $200 on fragrance and then end up smelling like your laundry detergent? It just right. doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. You know, Marilyn Monroe said the only thing she wore to bed was Chanel number no. five. She <laughs> didn't say the only thing I wear to bed is Chanel number no. five and the sweet smell of gain. <laughs> and it's funny because some people are like love that smell of the like fragrance yeah. laundry. And I, it honestly makes me kind of gag. <laughs> I don't like it either. Um, but if you love it, I think you just have to train yourself to realize what it is. I mean, you know, I love, and I will admit this, you know, when I was a kid, I really loved like fake cheese, like, you know, the cheese you get on nachos. Yeah. Velveeta or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? But like that melty, and I just loved to dip things in that. And, you know, I mean, secretly every blue moon, when I go to a concert, I still want it, but <laughs> Most of the time, 
you know, like if I go to a restaurant and they're going to bring me like, you know, a piece of prime rib or something, I don't want that fake cheese drizzled across the top because it doesn't taste good. You know, I have learned that, you know, there's better things. And I think that's what needs to happen with your laundry. You need to learn that the smell of clean isn't fake. Mm. The smell of clean is clean. Oh, so true. And a lot of people are walking around smelling like their laundry detergent. Yeah, and I just will they have... think that's what clean smells like. Right. I will have one more plug for your yeah. laundry soap is one, you yeah. use a lot less. Like you even said yeah. in the beginning, one tablespoon versus two, but that's for a full load. Yeah. The other thing is it travels very well. So I know for me, if I'm going out of town on vacation and there's going to be a washer dryer, I'm bringing my own detergent. And it's super easy. Just put it in a Ziploc bag. It's not a liquid that's going to spill or anything like that. You just put a couple scoops in your Ziploc bag and then you don't have to worry about using whatever detergent they have on site for you. So I'm yeah, excited to either. buy it and try it. I leave a Ziploc bag of it in my bag all the time. I mean, I travel <laughs> like I travel every week. I mean, I'm traveling this afternoon and I just leave a Ziploc bag in there so that if I get somewhere, I can I can hand wash it in a pinch. You know, mm -hmm. I can throw a pinch in the bathroom sink and a hand wash, or, you know, I can find a washer and dryer and do my laundry. I find it calming. Yes. And there's another product that you turned me on to that would also segue into, you know, just cleaning your house as well, is um, the oxygen bleach. Do you want to talk oh. about that a little bit? Because that's been life changing, especially when it comes bleach. to well, athletic clothes. Oh, I love oxygen bleach so much. First of all, it is the thing that removes the odor from your athletic clothes because it breaks down the oil. Those those clothes are hydrophobic. They hate water. They're oleophilic. They love oil. So they love the oil from your skin and they love the sweat in the oil in your skin. And the water can't wash it away. So the oxygen bleach actually breaks it down and washes it away. So I love it for that. But talking about cleaning your house, you know, it's all it is is if you buy quality it's pure hydrogen peroxide so you know it's completely natural so um i use it on my kit in my kitchen like um like when i make lasagna you know and the pan gets all ticky i just put it in the sink with hot water and throw in a little oxygen bleach and all that stuff floats off and it's safe so i don't mind that being on my my dishes um i use it to clean my bathtub you know because of you know, oil and all those things. I mean, I use it on my deck because it's safe for the animals and it's safe for the plants. Like it's completely safe for the pollinators. So I clean my deck with it. Um, I use it everywhere. It's one of my very favorite things. And it's crazy effective. Like it's sort of amazing. Um, there again, it's an old fashioned product. How do you, that, how do you use it in your laundry? Like you throw a tablespoon just in the washing machine. Okay. Just one tablespoon in the washing machine like and it'll before take out. Before you start it. Yep. Just with your detergent or your soap, you just throw it in at the same time and it'll break down the oil. So it'll take out, you know, the sweat. It'll also take out red wine. It'll take out blueberries. It'll take out grass stains. If you have babies, it'll take care of the blowouts. It's just this amazing <laughs> thing. And, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to buy because you have to buy it like from me or from like a specialty retailer, but it's incredible. It's totally mm -hmm. worth looking for. And and let me just clarify, it's not just for whites, it's for anything. Yeah, it's completely color safe. Okay. So your black Lululemon pants, perfect thing for them. Okay. It'll also yep. help them maintain their stretch. You know, like when you buy a swimsuit, you buy a swimsuit and by the end of the season, you think the elastic has gone out. Yeah. Well, it's not yep. elastic, it's lycra. And mm -hmm. what's happened is that lycra has gotten oily from the suntan lotion, from your sweat, oh. from the oil in the pool, mm -hmm. and it won't allow it to go back to its original shape. Once you use the oxygen bleach and all that oil comes out, it'll totally return to its original shape. Okay, that's fascinating because I did not know that. And since, since we're approaching swimsuit season, do you recommend hand washing bathing, like women's bathing suits in particular? I would throw them in a mesh bag and toss them in the washer. That's oh. what I do. Okay. Yeah. That'll be a little life-changing because I tend to soak them and then, but I did, yeah. I have not been putting in the oxygen bleach. So that's a great tip. Yeah. You definitely want the oxygen bleach for that. Okay. Okay. I have two more laundry questions for you that just yeah. they keep coming. So what about the pesky stains that like you're trying to get rid of your daughter 
spills vinegar, like, you know, those stains that are really hard to get out. So my first, my first go-to is always going to be a mixture of vinegar and water, 50 vinegar, 50 water. I keep in a spray bottle. That's my first go-to. If that doesn't work, my next trick would be like soap and a brush, like a bar of laundry soap and a horsehair brush. You wet the brush, you run it across the bar, and then you attack the stain with the brush. If that doesn't do it, let's move up. Chances are one of those two things will. But if it doesn't, then I like an oily soap. And I use an oily laundry soap. Like I love stain solution from the laundress or spot remover from Archipelago. But if you don't use one of those, use a liquid hand soap. You know, the one thing I won't use on my laundry is Dawn or dish soap. I don't like dish soap because it works so well. Um, dish soap has gotten so effective because it, they've made it so acidic. And so if you're wearing like a black t-shirt and you use dish soap on it, you'll get the stain out, but it'll actually look sanded because it's abraded the surface of the fabric. Mm. So liquid hand soap has that oily texture that we're going for. It just doesn't have that much acid in it. Okay. And one of those three things will take it out for sure. And I did something that you recommend in the book for stains that like maybe you've even put in the dryer. So if something didn't come out and you didn't check it and then you dried it, which normally I was like, oh, forget it. Yeah. The stain's not coming out. You have like this trick with hot boiling water and I did it on something and it came out. Yeah. So you put some oily soap on the stain. Then you sprinkle oxygen bleach on it. You rub it in with your finger because oxygen bleach is a powder. You rub it in with your finger and you make like a little paste and you let it sit. Then you turn the, ta the tap water to hot, just straight hot, and stick the stain under it and it'll come right out. I've done it to stains that are like 70 or 80 years old and they've come out. Wow. We can it's, call it's you pretty the, stain, amazing. the stain guru. <laughs> well, you know, so we all have to have a gimmick, right? Just just to clarify for our listeners, you you kind of gave three different options for stain remover. You're doing all of this. You're trying option one, throwing it in the wash and then seeing it? Or are you just like doing it with your hands and if it doesn't come out, then try I usually try two. option one and then rinse it. Okay. And if it didn't work, I go to option two. But so you're not doing a full wash. Times. You're just kind of right. rinsing it under a sink. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So... This has been fascinating about laundry. We could spend the rest of the time, but I do want to pepper in a few, you know, nuggets from your latest book, which yeah, I'll just hold it up here. House Love. Thank you. House Love. Laundry Love, which the Laundry Love is in my laundry room. For, I like the for reference. Thanks. Um, yeah. So, you know, we have a lot of busy, maybe stressed out listeners out there who cleaning can be it can be stressful. It's either stressful because their kids are making a mess, their husband, their partner are making a mess. Maybe they're getting ready to entertain and that's kind of stressing them out. Like what are your like overall tips? And I mean, the book breaks out by like room and area and highly recommend you guys pick up a copy of this. But Thanks. what are just some of like your overall tips on infusing more joy into your life when it comes to cleaning and kind of gets back to the laundry. Like it's a reflection of just the love that you have for your house and your environment and I don't know, all that good stuff. Yeah. One great thing about cleaning is it gives you a chance to touch your stuff. You know, like we all work for our stuff and we buy stuff that we love and cleaning gives you a chance to get to touch it. You know, I mean, it's really funny. There's an example that not everyone recommend, not everyone will understand, uh, everyone will understand, not even though not everyone does it, but it's putting up the Christmas tree. People who put up the Christmas tree talk about, oh, every time they take out an ornament, they remember where they bought it or they remember who gave it to them. Well, that same thing can be true with all the knickknacks on the piano. You know, you can pick them up and as you dust them, you're like, oh, we got this at such and such. Or, you know, oh, my kids gave this to me. It's especially true for people who are into collectibles. But it can also be true if you and your husband bought a piece of art and you dust it. So that's the first part. The second thing is, which is my biggest, it's I hope it's one of the biggest takeaways from the book, 
is we did the 10 minute clean. Mm -hmm. So it's what you do if you only have 10 minutes to clean the living room. And the reason I love it, I love it for two reasons. Number one, there's a playlist. So okay. you turn on this 10 minutes worth of music and you know, like by the time that Donna Summer's done singing, you should be vacuuming. So I love it for that reason. But the other reason I love it is because you can do anything for 10 minutes. You know, no matter what it is. I mean, I had a crown put on last year and the dentist was like, this isn't going to take more than 10 minutes whenever they were doing like the drilling and all the ick. And I told myself, I can get through anything for 10 minutes. You know, so you can do 10 minutes and it, you'll be amazed at how much you get clean in 10 minutes. You know, if you just go for 10 minutes and if you do that all the time, then eventually everything is clean. So don't stress out about that. The other thing is, you know, like, I mean, I hate to use this because it's so sort of cliche and my partner hates these sorts of little things, but I love them. So I use them. You know, if you can't be in the room you love, love the room you're with. So <laughs> when you're in the living room, clean the living room. Don't find one of your kid's jackets and all of a sudden you have to take it upstairs and hang it up in his closet. You know, throw it to the door. Like if you watch maids in a hotel, when they go in to clean a room, they go in to clean the room. You know, they don't take the sheets off the bed and run them to the washing machine. They take them off the bed and they throw them on the cart. They go in and they clean the bathroom. And when they take out you know, all the glasses that I've used and all the towels and whatever, they throw it all on the cart and then they clean. So your cleaning is a lot easier if you don't let it turn into something bigger. If you're in the living room, be in the living room and your cleaning really won't take that long. And then once you get the living room done and you go to, you know, carry all the wine glasses to the kitchen then you can start on the kitchen, but don't be like, oh my gosh, I've got all these wine glasses. I have to go to the kitchen. And then you take them in the kitchen and you start loading the dishwasher and you realize that your son didn't unload the dishwasher last night. So now you have to do that. You have to unload the dishwasher and then reload the dishwasher. And then you realize the sink is dirty. And so, well, I might as well go ahead and scrub it since I'm here. And then all of a sudden the living room, you know, it's three hours later and the living room's still not clean. So go in the living room and clean the living room. Mm. I think what you're saying is be present in the space that you're yeah and in. mindful and, and mindful. enjoy it. The thing mm. is, like, we are we live in a very sort of fortunate world, you know. I mean, there's lots of things going on, but we're really pretty lucky, and we're lucky that we've probably created a living room that we love, and it has things in it that we love, and. You know, I searched for three years to find those two chairs that sit opposite my sofa, and I love them. And I bought the desk at an antique store from this man who told me stories, and I love it. So rather than being in the living room and being worried about whether or not I paid the water bill, I want to be in the living room and remember talking to Mr. O'Neill about my desk and, you know, listening to Donna Summer and just sort of enjoying the fact that I have this beautiful desk and, mm. you know, enjoying the fact that when I was in, you know, I remember buying the sofa at Gabbert's 25 years ago. And, you know, I spent three hours with the interior designer picking out the right fabric and it was really fun. You know, it was the whole process was fun. Like, you know, buying things is fun. And so, you know, when I vacuumed the sofa, you know, I remember Mary Hickey helping me pick out, pick it out, and it's fun. And so being mindful isn't just being mindful. It's sort of finding joy, you know, it's, you know, it's like reassociating your, you know, that time with whatever. And, you know, listening to Donna Summer. Actually, today we, I mean, I know that this, this podcast is going to air later than obviously when we recorded it. But the day we're recording it is Sylvester's birthday. So, you know, when everybody listens to this, I think they should be in their living room at least once. They should listen to Mighty Real. That's oh my awesome. Gosh. So well, fun. And I, I love what you're saying about being mindful. Stephanie and I talk about mindfulness so much on this podcast. We talk about mindful eating and just being present and maybe being mindful when you're out in nature. And so I love that you're taking it into the home 
and asking our listeners to be mindful in the room that they're in and enjoy the room that they're in and not get bogged down with all of the to-dos in the room or in the next room over and two rooms over. And I I love that. Yeah. And it's just that kind of attitude of gratitude, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. you need this attitude that like, you're just happier if you realize how great your life is, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, your life is great. Even when it's not great, it's still pretty great. You know, I mean, not to bring you down and I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but just to tell you that your life is great, even when it's not, you know, I'm sitting in my store, right. And I love my store. I picked everything out in the store. I mean, my father-in-law died nine hours ago and Mm, that's bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, thank you. But you know, he was 93. He had a really great life and you know, that's bad and I'm upset about it. But I can also still find joy in my life. You know, it's, you don't have to be, everything doesn't have to be bad. Mm -hmm. You know, we take this doomsday mentality or we realize that life is pretty great, you know, and you can be happy, you know. I mean, I got to have him, you know, I got to know him for what, 18 years. So, I mean, I was lucky. I was lucky. Absolutely. Patrick, so inspiring. I mean, just what you shared, this is way beyond just cleaning your house and, you know, but you've taken these concepts and ideas that like Marnie said, we talk about and you've infused them into the day to day. And I just think our listeners are going to take so much away from this conversation and the attitude of gratitude and your life is good. I mean, this is just, this is beautiful what you just shared. Um, Well, thanks. And, you know, as we start to wrap up this conversation, you've already peppered in like a ton of tips and strategies and um, advice and solutions. But what would you tell our listeners out there? You know, maybe it's one or two things that they could start doing immediately into their life to infuse more joy and be more present and express gratitude through the day to day chores of laundry and, and cleaning and taking care of your home. Well, there's a couple. The first one is. Um, take a cookie. When you go clean the living room, take a cookie with you because nothing can be bad if you have a cookie, (laughs) you know? Um, It's just find these little moments, find these little things that make you happy. You know, it doesn't like, I mean, David Yerman makes me happy. David Yerman makes me very happy, but so does candy, you know? (laughs) And as much as I wish that every single time I went to clean the living room, a new bangle would show up. You know, a cookie can show up every time, right? Oh. Um, so, you know, that's one thing. I think make. I think the idea is make things fun. One of my first tips was hang a disco ball in your laundry room. I want to do that, by the way. You yeah. have to hang a disco ball in your laundry room because it's amazing. I'm pretty but, sure know, I have a disco that... ball in my furnace room. I just need to pull I, it out. I have one too from a party 10 years yeah. ago. I'm going to bring it out. Well, then the laundry room needs to be the party. Right. So, you know, there's that. And then I just really, I think that everything becomes more fun. If you're just going to, if you just like bring some music, you know, bring a drink, bring a cookie. I think there's that. But I also think realize less is more like you don't need 50 cleaning chemicals. You can probably clean your whole house with a spray bottle of vinegar and water, some towels and a microfiber cloth. Like you can dust with microfiber. You can use vinegar on the glass. You can use it on the floors. You can use it on the, the only thing you can't use vinegar on is your stone countertops. For that, you need to use vodka, but a spray bottle of vodka, a spray bottle of vinegar, and, you know, some towels, and you could just tackle the world, you know? And so I think that that makes it easier. I think it also makes it more fun when, you know, you're not like running around to figure out which sink has the glass cleaner under it, you know? And then with that, since we're talking about that, if you live, if you have more than one floor in your house, you need more than one set of cleaning cleaning supplies. There is no reason to carry the vacuum cleaner up the stairs. 
you know, there's got to be a closet somewhere upstairs where you can put another stick vac. They're not that big. You know, you can find a spot for another stick vac and another bottle of vinegar and some more towels. Because that also makes it easier when you can get to your supplies. You know, I think that going back to Ina Garten, you know, and her having fun with the kitchen. If you ever watch Ina, I'm obsessed with Ina Garten. I don't know if you've noticed, but, <laughs> you know, I'm obsessed with her. But if you watch her, everything is within reach. And she, no matter what it is, she has the right tool. So if she needs a ladle, she has a ladle. And then if she needs a slotted spoon, baby, it's right there. Well, she has the tools, so it makes it fun. So Ina has what she needs to get the results she wants. So when you're in your laundry room and all you have is, you know, some sort of sink that you're not willing to wash your hands in because it's so dirty and you don't have a stain bar, you don't have a stain brush, you don't have a spray bottle of vinegar because you took it upstairs and it's under the kitchen sink because you used it to clean the sink. If you don't have the tools there, then it's a chore. The difference between chore and hobby is you invest in a hobby. So get yourself what you need and then it makes it more fun. You know, so I guess the tips are, Decide that it's fun. Get what you need to make it fun. You know, and it'll be fun. I love that. I think I yeah. think those are all such great ideas. And I'm just thinking about my house, which is three floors, and how if there's a spill or anything, it's like, do you got to go find the stuff? And it's it's just a hassle. And I love the idea of just having little like kits on each level. Yeah. And the vodka thing, I've never heard of that. So Oh, so the vodka thing. So you can clean your countertops. Vodka is antibacterial. You can clean right. anything with vodka. Yeah, right. So it's great for your countertops. It's also great to clean the cutting boards. But the other fun trick about vodka, the cutting it will boards. odor from anything. Huh. So you can yeah. spray vodka in sneakers. You can spray it on sports equipment. You know, your dress, like if you wore your dress and you went to a party and you ended up standing next to a cigar smoker and you came home and really the dress is clean because you only wore it to a party, right? But it smells like cigar smoke. You can spray it with vodka and that will be gone. Well, like the smoke wow. outdoor at a fire pit. Yeah, vodka is takes another care great of it. one. So the other day I did that with my son because he had a smelly hockey jersey that he wanted to wear to a game. And I'm like, we didn't have time to wash it. And I just sprayed yeah. him with it. And it so worked, just right? any yeah. kind of cheap vodka? Well, cheap, cheap yeah, like vodka, college right? vodka. Get the okay, cheapest yeah. vodka you can get your hands on. You're not yeah. using the high-end vodka. Mm -hmm. No. That's and is it 50-50, like the vinegar? No, it's just or straight just vodka. Just 100%. And what's wow. the difference between using vodka and using like rubbing alcohol? Vodka, when it dries, is odorless and colorless. It's the okay. only alcohol that will be odorless and colorless when dry. Okay. Interesting. And you yeah. said like, something else I was going to ask. So for glass, like for windows, we don't need the glass cleaner? No, I just use vinegar. Okay. You can also wow. use rubbing alcohol if you'd rather. And if you go to like bottle. Nordstrom or Neiman Marcus in the cosmetics department, they clean all their glass with rubbing alcohol because it cuts through the makeup. Hmm. Hmm. Well, this is going to be life changing the vodka because I would use that on my marble countertops then. Yeah, it's great on your countertops. And then, you know, the good vodka, the trick is when you're at the liquor store buying the cheap vodka, yeah. buy yourself some good vodka. Yeah. And while you're cleaning the countertops, you can, uh, you can whip up a martini or something. Maybe that's how I'll get my husband to clean if I start serving <laughs> drinks. Well, you know, and cookies, among other things, but we'll see. Right. I mean, it's very you know, interesting. Co cookies and a, I mean, honestly, a cookie and a martini, and your neighbors will probably go for an alkaline. <laughs> so we are health and wellness coaches here, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. so maybe apple and almond butter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That doesn't sound as good. We can make, we can cook up some really good, but healthier cookies, Marnie. Yeah. I, I was totally but, I mean, yeah. Protein balls. can be as healthy as you yeah. want. Yeah. yeah. Or to be completely honest with you, one of my favorite things on the planet is dried apricots. I would probably choose a dried apricot over a cookie most days anyway. <laughs> so, you know, you could just use those. <laughs> yeah. Lots I love of options. It. 
Well, Patrick, I know we have to start to wrap up this conversation. Where can people find you, buy your book, find you on social? Um, you can buy the book anywhere. It's at every bookstore. It's, you know, um, my store is at Mall of America. It's called Mona Williams. You can find me online at laundryevangelist.com. And the fun thing about going to laundryevangelist.com is I have lots of videos like lots of YouTube videos that show you how to do a lot of these things. So if you're like, how do I remove lipstick? You There's a video for that. Um, on social, I'm Laundry Patrick, and it's Laundry, P-A-T-R-I-C. So you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Um, you can find me on Twitter. And I will say I try, try to answer everybody who messages me. I can't 100%, but I try but on Thursdays on YouTube, I, every Thursday I do a live at 1.30 Central. You can log in and like ask questions and I answer them live. That's amazing. So yes. everybody that's listening to this, check that out. Yeah, you can do that. And if you live in Minnesota or you're traveling here, go check out his store, Mona Williams, yeah. in the mall and purchase these products that we talked about. So Patrick, one final question that we love asking all of our guests is what does the art of living well mean to you? Oh, gosh, this is a great question. Um, I think the art of living well means that you have this beautiful life. Like um, we all have this idea that, you know, you look at a magazine or you look at, you know, a movie and that's the perfect life. And really, to me, the art of living well is that when I sit down at the end of the day, you know, with my partner, and I look at my house either clean or dirty and my laundry clean or dirty, I sit down and I look at it. I'm like, yeah, I'm home. This is home. And I think the art of living well is you don't live in a house, you live at home. Oh, I love that. Beautiful and so it's unique. Yeah. Well, this was such a fun conversation, like fun and insightful and helpful and practical and inspirational all, all into one. So no, thanks. we can't thank you enough. Safe travels. I know you're doing a thanks. big book tour right now. And yeah, yeah, yeah and I can't check wait out to his book. implement some of this stuff immediately. Well, thanks. And can I give you one final tip? Yes. Of course. If you tell your kids you're going to the laundry room, they won't follow you. Uh, okay so we call so it you need time to yourself. going to the party oh right. oh oh yeah, okay if got you need it time to yourself yes you that is very longer. helpful for moms with younger kids who would yes. follow right. them around now my children like disperse to their bedrooms and it's hard to find them but that's sure that would have been super helpful to know <laughs> a number of years ago i thought you're gonna say like call it the party room because i'm gonna yeah so did I'm gonna I. Make my husband hang the disco ball but it's the party room in our room yeah. yeah, maybe they'll enjoy it too. And I will it's say- It's funny, I have a client who stashes candy in her laundry room. <laughs> so when she wants to go eat candy, that's where she goes. <laughs> okay, that's funny. If I do that, my kids yeah. will find it. And then they really won't want to leave the laundry room. Right. But, um, I do love your songs and I made a playlist. I just made one big playlist with all of them because there are so many yeah. songs that I hadn't heard of in a while. You know, especially oh, for good. anyone that grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s era. Sure. Um, lots of fun songs. So make yourself a playlist. Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Patrick. Push. Thank you so much. Uh, this was super fun. Yeah. You're welcome. And we had fun. Have a too. great day. Thanks. Have a good day. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.